In this screencast, we're going to look at how to work with your version control system inside IntelliJ IDEA. For this example, we're going to use Git. IntelliJ IDEA provides completion for your GitHub repositories if you're logged into GitHub via IntelliJ IDEA. As usual, the completion is smart enough to recognize sections from the middle of the URL you're looking for. In this demo, I'm going to clone the project to the default location. IntelliJ IDEA recognizes this as a Gradle project and automatically uses the Gradle import process to create the new project. Again, we'll use the defaults here. This project is imported and built and IntelliJ IDEA automatically understands which are the source and test directories for the project. Let's make a small change to see the version control integration in action. This square class has the methods sketched out, but they've not yet been implemented. If we navigate to the test for this class, we can enable the test for the vertices method and run it. We expect it to fail as we haven't implemented the functionality yet. Moving back to the implementation, in the spirit of test-driven development, we can do the simplest change that will make the test pass. Now that we've made these changes, we can see the gutter is a different color for the lines we've changed. We can also click on the gutter and see more useful features. We can, for example, undo this specific change if we need to. We can open the changes in a separate diff view and we can copy the original code that we have now overwritten. Let's open the version control window. We can get to it from the tool windows button in the bottom left or we can use Alt and 9 or Command and 9 to open it. Here, the default change list shows a list of all the files we've changed, and we can see any new files that haven't been added to version control yet. We can commit these changes by right-clicking and selecting Commit, or we can use Control k or Command k to open the Commit dialog. The Commit dialog shows the files we've changed and any new files we've created that we might want to add. We can enable a diff view of the files that have changed at the bottom, and we can cycle through all the changes to see if they're OK. We can enter a commit message, and IntelliJ IDEA will even check our spelling here. On the right, there are a number of automatic steps that can be applied before we commit. We can reformat or rearrange our code, we can optimize the imports, which I'm going to choose to do. We can analyze the code for potential problems and check if any to-do items should have been addressed. I'm going to turn both of these off as I want to make the commit process as quick as possible. We can also automatically clean up problems that have been identified by our inspections and update any copyright text. Now we can commit all our changes. We can see there are no longer any changed files in the default change list, but we do have one unversioned file. If we add this file to our gitignore file, we'll see that this no longer appears in our local changes view and we won't be prompted to add it to git. Another useful feature is the ability to see the git history for a specific file. We can see the diff for each revision and we can even compare any revision with the current version. Probably the most useful view for working with version control systems is the log view. Here you can see all the revisions the author and the dates of these revisions, the files that make up a revision, and see a diff for that file. In our case, we can see that our master branch is two commits ahead of the remote master branch. We want to push those changes to the remote. We can do this either via the push menu item or using shift control K or shift command K. In the push dialog, we can select a remote to push to. In our case, we only have one, so we'll leave that as it is. We can also optionally push to a different branch. Again, we'll leave this as master. It's also possible to force a push, but we're on the master branch and this branch is protected from force push by default. Now we push our changes and we can see this was successful. Let's look at slightly more advanced features. The branches menu shows us which branch we are on and provides us with help for working with branches. We can create a new branch from here if we want to. 
or we can select any commit in the log view. And when we right click and select new branch, we can create a branch of that revision. By default, IntelliJ IDEA will check out that new branch. So if you don't want to be working on the new branch, you need to untick this box. Now we've created and checked out our new branch, we can work on some new features on this branch. We're going to implement the vertices feature for circles on this branch, following the same process as we did for squares. We run the test, make the change and rerun the test. Let's explore some other features of the commit dialog. We can reuse an old commit message and edit it if we wish. We can also commit and push our changes in one action. We can do this using the keyboard shortcut Control alt k or alt command and k IntelliJ IDEA shows us this will create a new branch on our remote. When this is done, our log view shows the new branch and the commits on all our branches. We can switch back to the master branch by right-clicking on the branch name, selecting the master branch menu item, and clicking on checkout. Now we can continue making changes to support our square functionality. With a passing test, we commit these changes to our branch, which is master, and when we view the log, we can see the master branch is updated with our new commit. We can see in the log view that there are commits on two branches, master and circle changes, at this time. If we now want to merge our circle changes, we can right-click on the branch we want to merge, making sure we're on the correct branch, and select Merge into Current. IntelliJ IDEA performs the merge and lets us know that we don't need the circle changes branch anymore and offers to delete it. When we delete this branch, we can also delete the remote circle changes branch. So IntelliJ IDEA makes it easy for us to clean up unnecessary branches as we go. Now we've made a number of changes to our square class, we can see another nice feature in IntelliJ IDEA. For any file in version control, we can right click in the gutter and select annotate. This shows the author and the date of the last change for every line in the file. Hovering over one of these will show more information, including the commit message. Double-clicking will show all the files changed during that commit. Right-click and select Annotate again to turn off annotations. As our last step, let's push all the changes to master to the remote, and the log view shows everything is now up to date. You can see IntelliJ IDEA's integration with version control systems like Git is designed to make it easy for developers to work effectively with source control. Thanks for watching.